Hello and welcome. I want to thank you all today for joining me for this video presentation. The topic today is PDF to XML mapping with IBM Transformation Extender. Please follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. OK, so here we are with the demonstration part. I have a folder um, which I've called PDF and in that folder I have a shortcut to a website called JotForm which I've used to create my fillable form PDF. Here's the form, it's quite easy to uh, create a simple demonstration form, uh, worth going to that site to check it out. OK, here's the PDF I created and I've actually filled in four rows of this PDF ready for mapping. It's a simple form, um, it takes up to eight lines of order items, item code, description, quantity and price. So far so good. Okay, if we go into a design studio, I have my project called PDF, which as you can see does not currently have any type trees. And that's the first thing, uh, I would, it, uh, it does have one schema called output, which I shall use for mapping later. But um, for now we need an input. Um, so the first thing to do is to use the PDF importer. So from the file menu I'm going to choose import, type PDF and select the PDF importer from the list. I'm going to point to the PDF file that I have, that's the form that I showed you earlier. Click next, so I want the resulting schema to be in the same project, click next and there we go, the schema has been created. I won't bother opening it just now, just note that it's there in the uh, extender navigator. Okay, so the next step is to build a map file. I've got a, a temporary uh, version there that I'm going to copy from later to save time, but for now I'm going to build the map file from scratch. So we choose a new map source in the PDF project and we'll call the source test.mms. Okay, within the source we need to create a new map um, and we'll call that map test1 and then within test1 we need a new input card which I shall call in1. For a type tree I shall use the picker to grab the schema that was created by the importer earlier. The type as always with a schema is just the root type xsd Let's expand that, expand that, and expand the namespaces. We're going to change the adapter from file to PDF. The command here is going to be uh, dash u pdf form dot pdf dash s to bring in the schema pdf form dot xsd and a dash t for tracing in case things go wrong. OK, so if I was to save and build and run that map, the map completes successfully. This input card is quite happily reading the content of that PDF. OK, it's all very well Im importing it and reading the file, but we really need to do some mapping with it. Let's just have a quick look at the structure. You will note that there is a bunch of output fields starting with order items 3 underscore 0 underscore 0 and the far right digit increments by one, one, two, three for the four fields in row one. Row two, the middle digit changes to a one and again you get a zero, one, two and three for the four items in row two and so on and so forth. That's not very um, very handy for mapping. Um, we will use uh, a proper output schema for the output side. So let's create a new output card called out the type tree we shall use the predefined output.xsd that I created earlier. XSD is the object that we want to use. Let's expand metadata, expand namespace, and I'm just going to pop the schema in there as well. Output.xsd. We're outputting to a file called output.xml, and that's the card properties done with for now. Just to have a quick look at the structure of this. Within root there is a infinite number of data rows potentially and within each data row there is four items, item code, description, quantity and price as per 
um, the field that I'm aware of in the PDF. I've created this manually. Okay, so um, let's map some of these header fields. Let's pop none in there and in there and populate these with the defaults. UTF-8. Okay, I'm not going to use the repeating group um, because I don't have a repeating group on the inside to, to be able to use that uh, properly. So I'm just going to insert none for that. But what I, what I am going to do is I am going to right click and add index. And I'm going to drop to a functional map. If row one is populated, I'm going to drop to a functional map with the four objects that I need to actually map that across properly. So equals if present, and I'm going to check for 300 being present. And if it is, I'm going to drop to a functional map, um, map row. And within that row, I'm going to need four things from the input to be able to generate my output. Oops, missed the comma. Comma, OK, 301, comma, 302, comma, 303. And then a couple of closing brackets to finish the functional map. Finish the rule. OK, I'm going to right click and choose the functional map wizard to generate the functional map. All of those are green, that's good. So let's create that and close. And let's have a quick look at the functional map. Um, there is four input cards, one, two, three, four. And on the output side, there are four fields to fill in. So this should be quite easy. In one, we already know is that. In two, we know is that. Now in three is text on the input side, but it does need to be a number on the output side. So after dragging and dropping those two in, we shall go into our functions list, find two number, which I have, drag and drop that over the top of those bottom two so that they are converted to numbers ready to be accepted into the um, output items there. So this map is finished. Um, I should be able to go back and build and run. So uh, let's do that now. Build and run. Map completed successfully. And in the XML files section, we will note we have an output.xml. Unfortunately, this is only mapping row number one at the moment. Show rules. We manually filled out equals if present for a, a fixed index of number one. And we know our input has a fixed quantity of up to eight rows. So what we do is we add index for those eight. Add index add index and so on and so forth all the way up to eight and then in each one of those we would populate it with a version of this rule instead of testing 300 I would test 310 and I would bring in the four objects 310, 311, 312 and 313 and then for the next row I would do the same for 320 but I'm not going to do that manually because I've done it once already and I shall bring up the um, previously created form and just copy it in. Test one, right click, copy. OK, OK, so we've copied that in to save some time. Just drag that over there for the moment. I right click here and show rules again. And um, I, I miss misnamed this card, this is the old card, it should have been overwritten but I called it out instead of out one. So we'll delete that, move that out of the way, um, leaving us just the out one card, which is here. And let's try again, show rules. Okay, you'll note the multitude of equals if present items, and as I said, each time we're testing for a different row. Uh, that's With a zero in the middle number there, that's row one, all the way up to row eight with a seven. And in each time, I'm getting the equivalent four objects, uh, 370, 371, 372, and 373, and dropping them down to the same functional map. Now, if I build and run this map, map completed successfully, you will note the output.xml change to now show four rows of input. Now there are not eight rows of, um, of output there because even though I did the all of the rules to do all eight rows, 
the if present means that the rows won't be produced if there's nothing there, which is exactly what I want. I don't want empty rows in my output with no data in them. So there we go. That's an example of how to map a PDF document with acro form fields into an XML file. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me for this video presentation today. I hope you found it both interesting and informative. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter at PaulBrettIBM. Thank you.